Amen. How you doing tonight? Good evening, Sister Jackson. How you doing tonight? Anybody else in, and then we'll get started. All right. Glad to hear it. Glad to know you're great. Let us go to our Father in prayer. God, you are who you say you are. You can do what you say you can do. I am who you say I am. I can do all things through Christ. Your words are alive and active in me. Most high God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I am so. The creator of the heavens and the earth and the fullness that I am. The one that knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. The one that ordained this very moment that sanctified this day for this purpose. Father, first we ask you to forgive us for we are falling short of your will and your glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your grace, mercy, and love, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, peace, joy, and healing, abundance, expansion, and awareness. But most of all, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who hung on Calvary's cross shed his blood for the remission of our sin and the salvation of our soul. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells within us day by day, guiding us as we go forth to do your will. Now, Father, we thank you for the angels that watch over us, protecting us, doing your will, that we may be safe from hurt, harm, and danger. Now, Lord, we ask that you touch me tonight. Speak to me and speak through me. Touch each and every person. Speak to and speak through them. Open minds, open hearts, edify souls that we may grow closer and stronger in you. In the name of the Most High, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. We find ourselves in our last chapter of Good and Evil. Let's do a quick recap. Understanding, we started with understanding the human condition dealing with disaster, disability and the goodness of God, struggling with sickness, our enemy in the world, the enemy within us, amen. Brother Norman, how you doing? The enemy within us, and last week we talked about overcoming death grip. Tonight, we go to 46 Psalms, and we'll talk about finding hope in a terrorized world. I hope you had a chance to read what the author wrote. But let's bring that up to where we are today. Martin Luther, Martin Luther went through what he went through when he wrote the 95 Theses. He was scrutinized by the Catholic Church for being a part of the Reformation and trying to change the way the church was dealing with people at that particular time. All right, so let's fast forward about uh, a century or two, where we're living right now with a pestilence in the land, a terror, if you would, if you're not right with the Most High. Then we have, from time to time, you hear about different churches, people go in church and 
people come in. We have to have armed security in church now. Um, we have to have we have to keep our children close to us because we don't know who's living next door to us anymore. Things that we took for granted when we were growing up, we can no longer take for granted. Um, while I was in the military, I was trained in counterterrorism. So when you say terrorize, I am thinking of things that happen like um, Oh, I don't know, you go to the mall, someone comes in and decides to open fire on people, innocent people. Uh, I'm thinking the, um, the bombs that are set off in nightclubs and places that people are not expecting or suspecting to be in harm's way. Where you go someplace with a peace of mind with the intent on having a good time. When you send your kids to school, they go to school with the intent of learning, not having to be hidden and dodge bullets to come home that day. I'm speaking particularly of Con Common, uh, Columbine and Sandy Hook. Um, and we all know about what happened with the churches here in Texas. We know what happened with the church in um, South Carolina. So when we talk about living in a terrorized world, it is real. It's just as, real now, uh, just as real now as it was for Martin Luther. We may not all be of Martin Luther's stature where we are trying to reform the church, but in a sense, we are all doing our part to reform society. By the simple fact you are here, there is something inside of you that says that you are a messenger, you are an ambassador for Christ, which means you cannot stand for everything that stands in the world right now. Something on the inside of you don't agree with everything that's going on on the outside. Would anybody disagree with that? So, since we all know those things are going on, our group discussion, what event has frightened or disturbed you in the past 12 months? And how did you or how are you coping with it? We all got one that's going on right now. We leave the house, we have to put on the mask. You go someplace outside of your normal circle, you have to do what you need to do to take care of yourself. Because otherwise, we don't know what's going on. So how are you coping with what's going on with COVID-19? How do you deal with when your time when you want to go out with your family? I remember 1990 when I first got here, um, I was working as an investigator on Fort Hood, and that's when the thing in Luby's happened. My wife wasn't home. I didn't know where she was, and I was home. I saw this going on Luby's. And of course, I'm wondering, was my wife there? Was my wife in Luby's? Fortunately, she was not in Luby's, but that's what happened. Gunman went in because his girlfriend broke up with him, he was not happy. He decided some other people had to be unhappy. So like I said, we're wrapping up our thing, our, our series on good and evil tonight. And we know that fear is false evidence of fear appearing real. So again, what's going on? How are you coping with whatever it is that you're coping with? Other than what common sense says, we know we need to put on a mask. We know we need to keep our distance. We know we need to stay within our small circles. And unfortunately, and fortunately, fortunately I get to interact with all of you, but I would much rather be in your presence so I could feel your energy so we can grow better. Iron sharpen iron. And it's always good when we come together because God said we're two or three are uh, together together in my name. I'll be a father in the midst. All right. So floor is open. Let's discuss. This is the last, the last, um, Last topic in this series. Let's discuss. How are we coping? How did you cope? Anything.
So we got everybody on tonight, got that full armor on, got those swords sharp, just stand and wearing my mask and praying for all of us. All right. All right. Anybody else? Having a hard time with all the anger, hate, and division in our land. I don't trust either party. <laughs> Guess what? You ain't by yourself. <laughs> I finished reading the prayer books, and I would love to be a part of a group praying, a group prayer meeting. I've been reading his word and praying a lot, finally going to church, amen. Praying and trusting in God, all right? Wearing a mask, lights all, and staying prayed up. All right. So we're putting on our armor. God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but a sound mind. And we seem to be using a sound mind. Amen. I mean, Jesus, the Son of God, was on top of a hill, and Satan said, Just throw yourself down, your angels will catch you. And he answered, Satan, No, we don't we don't work that way. We're not gonna tempt my father like that. So by us doing what we should do, we are coping and we are being within the rightness of God. All right? So if somebody tell you, well, I don't have to wear a mask or this, that, or the other because God going to take care of me, God may. And some of those same folks that have said that in the past are no longer with us. God gave us five senses. He intended for us to use them. Just like the, I'm sure you all heard the story about the man that needed to be rescued. He was either on top of a house that was burned or in the middle of the ocean. And three or four things came by to rescue the man. First, the lifeboat came. He wouldn't get in. No, God going to rescue me. Then he sent the helicopter. They dropped the helicopter. They dropped the... He's so big. He's too big for my big man to fix it. The church is out. Hey, Amen. That's true. I don't watch mainstream media because it's controlled mechanism, so I don't get worried with because the powers that tell me to be scared. Hey, Amen. That's good, too. So the man was on there. And they dropped the letter from the helicopter. He said, no, I'm waiting for God to save me. Man died. God, what happened? I was waiting on you to save me. And you look, I sent you two methods to get saved. You opted to be eaten by the sharks because you didn't take what I sent you. All right? So let's now. We already talked about our refuge. What do we seek when things seem to be caving in on us? We say we go to God. And who do you turn to for your first comfort and security? Comfort or security? That's the personal reflection. What refuge do you seek when life seems to be caving in on you? To whom or what do you turn to first for comfort or security? And we already answered. Praying and trusting in God. <clears throat> Excuse me. And basically doing what he said do. All right. Psalm 46 was written as a song of deliverance. Perhaps God had rescued Israel from attack of an enemy or from a plague or illness that was sweeping the region. Whatever the threat was, God demonstrated his power and his compassion by protecting his people. Let's read um, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not, therefore, will not we fear Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof, Shalai, my strong tower. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus. All right. There is a river, streams where, whereof shall make glad the city of God in the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her and shall be shall not be moved. God shall help her and that all right early, that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shalah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he had made in the earth. 
He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear into sunder and burneth the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in all the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shalom. That's uh, that's pretty powerful. Refuge. Three stanzas. It was a song of three stanzas. Shalah was a musical break, the musical interlude. They sang the first verse, stopped, meditated on that, and listened to the music. Meditated on that. God is our refuge. He is a place of security for his people. He's a place of security for his people. He's never too busy. You call him up anytime. Stop what you're doing, call him. He'll answer you. The psalmist imagines that the worst possible conditions on earth, earthquakes, toppling mountains, you name it, that's what they were thinking of. But we will not be afraid. Why do we not be afraid? Because God is our refuge. Or, as Brother Hank said, my strong tower. How hard is it to attack something in a tower? Think about how a tower goes above everything. And think about the 360 degree view you have when you are in a tower. You can see everything that's coming from all directions. And then for them to get up to you or to get you down to them is no easy task. Strong tower. Strong tower. It takes a lot to bring down a strong tower. Just going back to 2001 on 9-11, it took two planes to bring down those strong towers. And even then, they didn't bring them down. Part of the tower still stood. The towers had to be taken down the rest of the way. Now just imagine your, your father, the one that's get the one's DNA that you have within you, his tower. Men tried to build a tower to him, and he dispersed them. But just imagine a tower that he has that cannot no one be dispersed. My strong tower. Thank you, Hank. When the Messiah's return to reign in Jerusalem, the city of God, the Creator will be intimately accessible. Now, if you know anything about distances, you have a social distance, you have a personal distance, and you have an intimate distance. A social distance is 10 feet away, or as we say now, 6 feet away. A personal distance is 3 feet close. Intimate distance, uh, intimate distance is 18 inches or closer. That means I'm right up in your Kool-Aid. I'm in your grill. Now, when Jesus come back, that's how close we're going to be. He, he should already be within us, which is intimate. But when he comes back to live among us, it will be completely intimate all the way. The tower isn't, it gives you a, amen, Hank, it's not defensive. It's a tactical advantage. Amen. 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 He will have a throne within us, within the city of Jerusalem, and help her. It would be an Eden-like environment. Eden. Now we we all heard the story about Eden. Everything was beautiful, and we want to get back to that. As we talked about in the prior uh, prior lesson, our souls hunger to go back to where it belongs. All right. Then the psalmist encourages us to God's people to find comfort with the knowledge that he will fight our battles and defend us against our enemies. We don't need to worry 
We don't need to be in strife when we are faced with challenges or difficulty. The same is true for us to remember that the Lord, that the Lord is with his people. He is our stronghold and our security. In other words, he said, I got this. What else is there? I got this. In John 17, Jesus said, those that you have given me are mine. Those that are yours are mine. Knowing that we are safe with him. Exactly. When he prayed the intercessory prayer, Jesus made the same statement. These are mine. The ones that you have given me are mine. All right? We belong to him. When we accept him, when we believe in him, we belong to him. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We are his. So, the author of Psalms 46 looks to God for two kinds of help. First, refuge. A safe place we can run for protection. He protects us from the storm. Second, God is help. A source of inner strength when calamity or trouble breaks over us. He walks with us through the storm. In which way do you experience God care most often? Some personal examples with the group. Please share your example with the group. We know that we're either going into a storm, in a storm, or coming out of a storm. Or in a crisis, going into a crisis, or coming out of a crisis. Please share with the group. wife and I don't have close friends to be honest. Our faith is not really strong right now. So much going on in life. What do you all do? You just want to call on the jump that you and I. You know the story. You need to join the Lord to break the chains. Brother Norman, I'm one that believes in fasting. And you're not the only one who's gone through faith challenges. We all face them. And when I feel like hiding, I feel like running, that's the time that I need to fast and pray. Clean out the temple. Time to separate yourself 
from everything that's going on and spend time with God. If you're not able to fast three or four days at a time, that's fine. Do three or four hours at a time. Find you a spot somewhere where you can get by yourself and just spend time with God. Everybody, everybody here at one point or another has been knocked down. The difference between a champ and a chump is a champ gets back up and get back in the fight. A chump stays down. And by the fact that you're here tonight and knowing that your divine DNA says that you are a son of the Most High, you are a son of the King, it is time for you to spend some time with your father. Just you and him. If it's no more than two hours a day, 20 minutes a day, whatever time that you can steal away and just spend time with God fasting and praying, those are the steps to beginning to break those chains. You got anything, Pastor? Um, yeah, I was going to let him know. Uh, I know exactly how you feel uh, right now. Uh, uh, things on my mind. Who do you trust or, and who do you rely on? Uh, and when you feel like that you can't trust somebody uh, or you don't want to confide in that particular one, yes, I turn straight to the Lord. I get in my car, find me a tree, and just listen to some music. You and the Lord. I lock myself in my bedroom and, and just give it all to him. Uh, praying. Constant prayer. And after you pray a good prayer, sit there. Wait on an answer. I, I, you may sit there 30, 40 minutes or an hour or two, but you're getting your mind right. I, I, and that's what I, I call it, you know, uh, deprogramming and getting reprogrammed. Uh, I don't, I'm like you. I don't have many friends or, or even anyone to confide in. But I do talk to a lot of people. I help a lot of people. And, and that's how I find my breakthrough in helping and then sitting back and giving all of my time, all of my energy to the Lord. Find your Christian station, put on your radio, the uh, uh, or a record player that you like and let that speak to you. Our Father will give you a breakthrough. Amen. All right. Bless you. You're not supposed to trust man anyway. The Bible Amen. tells you to trust no man. We will let you down. We will let you down. As soon as you think that we are what we are, something will come up and it change that thought. It doesn't take much. But do that. All right. The psalm is divided into three stanzas, each ending with the word Shalah, which is a signal for a musical interlude to give the reader time to think about what's been said. As you think about it, what crisis or situation in your life can be described by verse 2 and 3? Verse 2 and 3 reads, Therefore will not we fear, 
though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled through the mountains shake, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, shall I? Think about that. Maybe your mountain's not shaking. Maybe the earth is not shaking. But what's going on in your life, whatever it is you're dealing with, that's your mountain. That's your earth. That's your world. Think about that for a minute. Think about that situation that you got going on in your life and, and, and take it to the Lord right now. It doesn't take a long, drawn-out prayer, just a sincere prayer from the heart. Lord, help me deal with A, B, or C. And from the way we're going now, you're going to have time. You'll get an answer before we're done. Think about it. An example of that would be an example of that would be um, I don't know one day you wake up and your life is hey Cindy and your life is making a sudden transition that you didn't plan for you know um, we talked about we talked about overcoming death's grip last week that's one of the four one of the top four significant emotional events that take place in take place in a person's life, along with losing a job, getting married, moving, those things that psychologists talk about has causing people's lives to change. So just think about however everything is going on, whatever is going on, how does that affect you? Whether your income increased or decreased, it affects you. If you lost a loved one, Recently, it affects you. Everything is affecting you. So these are the things, the type of situations that we're talking about in verse 2 or 3. Those are your mountains. All right? Why are we not to fear desolate and uncertain times? Why are we not to fear desolate and uncertain times. Who's with us? Who is with us? Where's our refuge? Where is our refuge? Verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Well, let's... Um, 
Let's get out the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament. Go to John 14. John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. And that's our Lord speaking. Jesus said that. God is our refuge and our strength. Amen. And then after Jesus came on the scene, he said, his peace he leaves with us. Not like the world gives us, but he gives us. So why do we need to be afraid? What is fear? What is fear? False evidence appearing real. John 10, 10. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of, he's given us a sound mind. Uh, we are more than conquerors. Put on that full armor. Make sure that sword is sharp. I read something the other day when I was studying for the lesson. And um, a rabbi was talking with um, someone that was doing faith healing. And he said he got excited and started screaming. And, he, and, the, and the person that he was with looked at him and talked to him afterwards. He said, you know, all that ain't necessary. When your show up is sharp, you don't have to cut. You don't need to work that hard. So if we keep our sword sharp, we don't have to work that hard. Let the blade do the work. Now, how do we keep our sword sharp? Well, y'all doing it right now. We keep our sword sharp by studying the word. Study to show yourself approved. And then when you're showing yourself approved, when you come on a situation, when you know your word, you speak the word to the situation. We know that he's our strength and our refuge. We can speak that to any situation. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For he is with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Times get rough. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down beside the still waters. Y'all with me? All right. The second stanza, verses 4 through 7, pictures the security and safety of dwelling in God's places. How would you describe the place where you normally dwell spiritually? Is it near God or is it a distance away? Iron sharpens iron. Amen. 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 Iron sharpens iron. So, where are you? Where are you spiritually? Are you close? Are you in that intimate space? Are you at that social space? Or are you in that personal space? Think about where you are right now. Are you in that social space? Six feet away, at least? Are you in that personal space? 18 inches to three feet? Are you in that intimate space? Where he's all up in your grill, in the Kool-Aid. Where are you? Right now, I'm, 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 it's intimate. Consider the man possessed by legion. He was a torment as Yahweh crossed the sea and had to calm the sea to ease the disciple fears. Once cured, the man became an evangelist for Christ. As we know, so we know who sent the storm. All right. Mm. I'm glad you said that, Hank. I'm so glad you said that. When I was nine years old, I was hit by a car. I had a compound fracture that bumped my head pretty good bump on my head and um, that was the first storm 
to prevent me from being here today. Every storm that you went through early was to prevent you from being here today. You, you look at it. Think about everything you've been through, everything you've been through in life. And today you're going to get something out of this that's going to help you grow to become better than what you were yesterday. And then whatever happens from tomorrow, today on, whatever storm comes up is trying to prevent you from getting to that next level that God has for you. Every storm that comes into your life is trying to keep you from becoming who you truly are. God is the author and finisher of our salvation. I'm so glad you went to the storm, Hank. I am so glad you went to that. Satan knew that Satan knew that that man would be healed. He knew that legion would be cast in the sea. And in order for him to prevent that, he tried to stop Jesus from crossing over into that land. So again, where are you? Are you in a social distance? Are you in your personal space? Are you intimate with God? Hank, I like you. You make me think. You trigger stuff. Amen. Don't quit. We make a good team. Where do you sense a need for God's fortress protection in your experience right now? Right now, where do you sense a need for God's fortress and protection right now? Here am I, Lord. Amen. Here am I. To lead the conversation, I would say I have some pretty good faith, but every once in a while, doubt tries to creep in. And the doubt comes because God has given me a vision of what's coming, but I get impatient. <laughs> I want what he said that has gone happen to happen right now. But that ain't how it works. So when I'm waiting for the blessing to come, I start to get impatient. And when I start to get impatient, that allows that doubt to creep in. We know that we're going to be blessed. We know that everything is going to be all right. We know that we got abundance coming. We know we're not going to be hungry, but we want it right now. We become a microwave society. I can start my name being and mentally distance myself by walking in the flesh. I'm a yo-yo. You human. You human. Somebody comes along to try a spirit comes along to try to trip you into the yo-yo mechanism. You get up, you walk out the house with a smile on your face, you got some pep in your step, and the first person you run across is doing whatever they can to pull 
Uh, wait a minute. John 10, 10 says what? Kill, steal, and destroy. They want to kill your happiness, steal your joy, and destroy your hope for the day. Just for the moment, just, just enough to make you forget who you are and whose you are. Just enough to get you to put negative energy in the universe. Hello, how y'all doing? Just enough. But do you recover? Yo-yos go up and down. You have a down moment. When you realize you have a down moment, can you correct? I can give church answers, but I have started a lot of curls to rob me of my joy. You know. Brother Norman, you know. As long as you know, you can deal with it. But when you act like you don't know, or when you pretend ain't nothing happening, then you have a problem. We talked about a couple of lessons ago. There's three things we need to do. Confess, repent, and forgive. You've confessed that the cares of the world started to get you and rob your joy. Now all you need to do is re repent and forgive yourself and keep going. You human. You human. We have our days. Confess, repent, and forgive, and continue to march. You might not win that battle, but the war ain't over. The war has been won. You might have to give up this battle in order to win a bigger battle. All right? All right. Verses 8 through 11 looks beyond the present day into the future when all God's enemies will be conquered, how does that truth help us when we feel like giving up and giving in? Let's read verses 8 through 11. Come, behold the works of the Lord, that desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, and cut the spear in the sunder. He burneth the chariot with fire. Be still. Let me say that again. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted. Among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts. Is with us. The Lord of hosts. Is with us. The God of Jacob. Is our refuge. Now, we all know Jacob was a trickster. If God didn't leave Jacob, and I don't think none of us have lied and stole and done as much as Jacob, and he stayed with Jacob and named a whole nation after Jacob, Israel, changed his name from Jacob to Israel and named a whole nation after him, surely, surely, he's not going to leave us. How does that truth help you when you feel like giving up and giving in? Think about it. He didn't give up on Jacob. Stole his brother's birthright. <laughs> Had to hide from his uncle. <laughs> How many of you stole your birthright from your brother or your sister? How many of y'all are hiding from kin folks because you done done them wrong? Ain't none of us. How many of y'all done wrestled with an angel? You can't leave until you bless me. And if you tell me to wrestle with an angel, I want to see your limp. <laughs> oh, man. We talk about my God. The one that sits high and looks low. They created the heavens and the earth and the fullness thereof, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. 
all that is, all that was, all that will be. The one that spoke in the beginning and said, let there be light, and there was light. The one that took dirt and formed us, blew his breath into it. Pastor said Sunday, he ain't blowing his breath in no dirt. <laughs> the one that made us in his image, that divine DNA. He stuck by Jacob. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Besides Sister Jackson. Somebody else ought to say hallelujah. And know that you know that you know that you are a child of the king. Not a king, but the king. The king of kings. The lord of lords. Mm. Let's get back on this lesson. Where was I? Where is it? Where are you? Look beyond the present day to the future to know that God has conquered everything already. How does that truth help you, help us when we feel like giving up and giving in? song says the battle's been fought and the victory's been won. The battle's been fought and the victory's been won. And we know that fear is false evidence appearing real. God has not given us a spirit of that. That's, that's not of God. We are more than competence. What is, what is involved and being still before God. What is involved in being still before God? Giving up and giving in will be leaving the championship team to join losers. <laughs> to join losers. All right. We know that we can trust him that he will never leave us or forsake us. All right. Waiting on him. Uh, Pastor, what do you call them folks that take something to God and go back and get it? Fishing line Christians. So we don't want to be fishing line Christians. Mm -hmm. Cut that line. Cut the line. Abiding in him. Oh, so if we abide in him, that means we're not at a social distance. We're not at a personal distance. We're in that intimate space. And why does that help us when we feel threatened? What does be still, I am God mean? I got this. Letting go our pathetic tips of our lives. <laughs> yeah, they are pathetic. <laughs> they are pathetic. Yes, they are pathetic. Truth will set you free. Yes. <laughs> huh. All right.
feel safe and secure, letting go of everything. So what truths about God will you claim from this song when your world is terrorized? What truths about God will you claim from this song when your world is terrorized? Well, I spelled terrorized wrong. But y'all know what I mean. <laughs> Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Can you give that to me in 2020 vernacular? Look out, baby. I got this. That's what he said. Oh, that's one of my kids. I got this. I know the valley is not forever. Amen. But what's going on while you're in the valley? Who's with you and what does he have? Come on, Brother Norman. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What does he have? A rod and a staff that comforts me. And when you get out the valley, what's going to be laid out? A table going to be prepared before your enemies. Your cup going to run over. Surely. Surely. Somebody ought to say amen. Goodness and mercy should follow you all. Not some. Not a couple. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That sounds like something Moses might have said when he was standing on a rock. With that staff in his hand. With his arms outstretched. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In the palm of his hand. All right. All right. As you think back at the studies in this life, God, what questions about good and evil do you have? What questions about good and evil were answered for you? We started off with understanding the human condition, dealing with disaster, disability, and goodness of the Lord, the goodness of God, struggling with sickness, our enemy in this world, the enemy within, overcoming death, and tonight's subject, finding hope in a terrorized world. What have we learned about good and evil? What questions have been answered for you? Then, where do you have concerns or doubts? Unbelief. So if you know unbelief is where you are, then that's where you start your fasting and your praying. Ask for healing in your unbelief. Ask for healing in your unbelief. We can't cure your unbelief. But when you think about it, where has he brought you from? I don't need you to ask. I just need you to think about where has he brought you from? What have you been through? And what is it that is so strong to make you question your faith right now? You know that you weren't Reed Norman of today 
five years ago. And you know you weren't the Reed Norman that you are today 10 years ago. Everything has a season. Everything has a season. And this takes us back to where we began our study, back to Jubilee. As you think about it, Jubilee is a renewal time. If you're having problems with unbelief, this is now your time to let go, shed that unbelief, and to start your regrowing process. In Jubilee, in the book of Leviticus, when we talked about Jubilee, we talked about how the land was left alone, and you just lived off these land. I say these things because tonight has been revealed. Amen. Amen. You lived off the land. Whatever God provided is what you used. Right now, throughout this whole world, all of us have been put on a cosmic reset where we have to use what God is providing for us. And if your eyes have been opened for you and God has revealed some things to you, now you know which way you got to go, brother. Amen. God does not give you no more than you can stand. Each test that he gives you, let's, let's, let's talk about that two-week walk for a minute that took 40 years. You're going to pass the test. It may take you a while, but you're going to pass the test because you belong to God. Mm -hmm. What belongs to him, he's going to claim. Can't nobody take nothing from God. You may have to go through the purification process a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, you're going with your father. You're going with your father. Pastor, I'm done. You're done? I'm done. Amen. This is a good lesson, and, and like he said, the test is you're going to pass over and over. It may take a little longer. Those of you who who bake, who love to bake, how many times have you stuck a couple of pies in the oven and one got done before the other because the temperature in the oven wasn't the same in the front and the back. Uh, we ask ourselves, why is that? It's in the same square. It's got the same heat going in it. But at times, it takes a little longer in order for things to sink in and get done. Our learning path is not the same. Some catch on quicker, some let go faster. But when we do learn to trust in the Lord, when we do learn that we cannot talk to any and every body. We have to be picky because Satan come in all shapes and forms. I know that most people draw him in a big red suit, pitchfork, and horns, but I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, uh, gentlemen, Satan is going to come to you in that tight miniskirt. Ladies, Satan is coming to you in them tight fit jeans and the hair just right. He, he's coming. We have to open our eyes and understand what is going on around us. And then ask ourselves, can we trust that person? Or is that person going to cause havoc in my life? Or when we look and we think about the terrorized world, 
and finding hope. Our hope comes from above. We do things because we like to do them. So I'm not going to tell anybody to stop doing what you're doing unless it's against the law, but I am going to say step back. Look at the situation and find why you was, was there in the first place. Find that joy. And then know that only one person stole that joy. Only one person put a block. And that's Satan himself. No matter what form he came in. He wanted to stop it. He wanted you miserable. And if we allow that, he has succeeded. It's up to us to accept or reject whatever comes in our life. Meditate. Find yourself and allow God to work in your life. God bless you all. Amen. Well, Lord, we're gonna lift you up in prayer tonight. All hearts and minds clear? Amen. Most high God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The creator of the heavens and the earth and the fullness thereof. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. All that is, all that was, all that will be. Father, we ask you to forgive us for we all fall short of your will and your glory. Father, we thank you for your grace, mercy, love, understanding, peace, wisdom, and knowledge. We thank you for courage. We thank you for strength. We thank you for expansion, awareness. And we thank you for abundance. Now, Father, we lift up. We lift up Brother Norman tonight, Father. Father, touch his heart and soul. Heal his unbelief. Father, touch all of us. Heal our doubt. Heal our unbelief as well, mm -hmm. Father. Yes. Touch us. Please. Lead us and Please. guide us. Let us know that you are who you say you are. Let us be still and know that you are the Lord. Father, let us exalt you in all the land. Father, we just ask you to move within us, touch us, lead us and guide us, that we may show our divine DNA, being children of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, mm -hmm. the Most High God. Father, we pray for peace in Jerusalem, and we pray for peace within us, the peace that you left with us, not like the world gives, Father, but like you gave. You said in the garden, Father, that all those are thine are mine, Father. Father, we not just ask you to keep us wrapped in your hedge of protection, Bless us, watch over us as we go day by day, Please. and keep us. Please. In the name Please. of Yeshua HaMasiah, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. God bless all y'all. And uh, Wednesday night, we will be doing a baptism, and Monday we will pick up with Bible study. I am. I am will be the series. I am will be the series coming up. All right, God bless you, God keep you. And we will see you Wednesday night and looking forward to Monday.